Amen. Amen to that. Hey, why don't you be seated? I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you from God's Word tonight. Um, I'm not even going to ask you to turn there. It'll be up on the screen, and, and, uh, <clears throat> but you can read it when you go home tonight if, if you're not familiar with the story, but I bet many of you are familiar with it. It's a story in John chapter 11, and I was just asking the Lord this morning, God, what is it that you want me to say? What's the right verse for even talking about kind of what's, and he took me right to this passage. And in John chapter 11, there's this story about this guy whose name was Lazarus. And Lazarus had two, two sisters. Their names were Mary and Martha. And they, all three of them were grown-ups in the time of this story. But they're a brother and two sisters. And they lived there together. And they lived in this community called Bethany, this little village called Bethany. And we know, because the Bible tells us, that whenever Jesus was passing near the village of Bethany, he would always go to their house. And he would always stay with them because he, just, he just really felt right at home there. And he loved them and they loved him. And we know that Martha, she was like, a really good cook, and so I always pictured she kind of made these amazing chocolate chip cookies, and Jesus got to go there, and, and it was just always this treat. And, um, but then one day, Jesus wasn't there, and they had a problem. They had a problem, and that was that Lazarus, he, he got sick, and not like <clears throat> that kind of sick, but like he may die kind of sick. And so they sent word to this, with this messenger to go find Jesus in another village. And they said, hey, you need to come. And, and I just picture Mary and Martha, they, they're looking at each other and said, hey, he'll come. He always comes through. We know Jesus. He stayed here so many times and he loves Lazarus. They're, they're buds. Um, but it didn't go quite the way they were expecting. Let's look at it in verse 3. Lord... The one you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, when he got the message on the other end, he says an interesting thing. He says, this sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Who is God's son? Jesus. He's talking about himself so that I'm going to receive glory through this. Now, just to make sure, John wants to make sure we know this. Verse 5, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Let's not get any confusion. He, he did indeed love Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And then verse 6, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, and this is the part that really confuses us, he stayed where he was two more days. Tim Delena says, you know, sometimes our calendar and God's calendars they, they don't sync up. And we really want his calendar to sync up with our calendar. And I was just kind of thinking about here the last three or four or five days. I think a lot of us have been kind of feeling that, right? You know, after, after a good old, you know, hard rain, we're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. Now let's kind of move on. And, but it didn't move on. And then it kept coming. And it was really raining. And at this point, it's coming over the curbs and up onto the driveway and up to the sidewalk. And we're like, okay, <laughs> this would be a really good time now, Jesus, for you to step in and to do that thing that you do. Do it. And we're asking, Lord, why, why did you go? But he's he not showing up. And the water keeps coming, and we're watching it go up on the tires, and it's rising on the vehicles. And we're like, oh, my gosh. And then some starts to seep in the doors. And, and then there's an inch, and, and we're like, Lord, Jesus, this is when you do your thing, right? You always show up just in the nick of time. Come on now. Enough already. Come on, Jesus, do your thing. And he didn't come. And then a number of people, there, we're going to evacuate. It's like, we've got to get out of here. What in the world are you doing, God. And see, when, when our calendar, when our time schedule doesn't sync up with his, that leads to a lot of confusion and frustration, right? We're like, I don't understand what's good. This didn't go in the way it's supposed to go. And that's how Mary and Martha were feeling. They're like, um, he's dying. We're not talking a head cold here. He's dying. Uh, Jesus, aren't you going to show up? And what, what we want to read, what we wish it said, was back in verse 6, and when 
Jesus heard about his friend Lazarus. Jesus ran to Bethany. He ran as fast as he could run. And just in the nick of time, he put his hands on Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, you're healed. But that's not what it says. And if you didn't know better, you could almost wonder, did he, maybe did he not love him after all? They just thought he loved him, but he didn't really love him. Imagine what, what was going through Mary and Martha's minds. Especially when he did finally show up. And, and especially when they figured out, wait, you got the message and you stayed two more days where you were? Imagine the disappointment. Imagine the feeling of, of betrayal, the letdown, the shock. Jesus, what are you doing? You stayed there two more days when we had sent you word that you could come and you could heal them. We know you could do that. We've watched you do that, but you didn't show up. But they, but they knew he loved them. That wasn't the question. And John made sure we know. No, 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 no. Don't get confused. This doesn't have anything to do with my not loving you. I love you. Um, and so there the ladies. They're like, could you please then help us understand what is going on here? And Jesus is like, yeah, see, <laughs> I'm seeing a little bigger picture than you can see from your vantage point. See, Jesus could already see something that was going to happen in the aftermath of all this. They couldn't see that. And we know that. He's saying, hey, I need you to trust me here, all right? I just need you to put aside your skepticism, your disappointment, your feeling of the betrayal. I need you to set that aside. I need you to trust me here, okay? Right? And we know this because of, of what he said in verse 4. He says, this sickness will not end in death. No, uh, 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 uh. This is actually going to be for God's glory so that the Son, I, will be glorified through it. That's what he says. It was like he was saying, hey, I get it. You wanted me to swing in here just in the nick of time, and you wanted me to, to stop the sickness. You wanted me to fix the sickness, right? But not this time. I'm not doing it that way. I, did, I do do it that way, many, but that's not this time. I'm not doing it that way. He said, this time I'm letting it go to the worst, the worst possible moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to reverse just the sickness. I'm going to do one better. I'm going to reverse the death. You're getting ready to see one of the best ones I've ever done. Oh, now, you and I, we'd always rather have him come in while we're still just in the sick stage, right? A little bit of swinging in right now would be mighty nice, Jesus. But time, sometimes he says, no, nope, not this time. I'm going to let it go. This time I'm going to wait a couple more days. But it's not because I don't love you. Don't get confused about that. But it's because I'm going to receive glory through what's getting ready to happen. Because I've been watching you. I've been, you know, I know you've been saying I trust you and yeah, you, I believe in you. And, and I, I know that. But I've also been watching you keep your hands pretty good on the steering wheel. You know. And you talk about how you love me and you trust me. And, you know. But I've been watching and uh, up to now you've been handling things pretty well on your own. You're kind of fixing all the problems yourself. And, but this time I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let you come to the end of yourself this time. I'm gonna let things go to such a point that there won't be any question whatsoever who fixed it. It had to be me because it's that big. Go down to verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and she saw him, because she went running out when he finally got into the village, she goes running out. She, she, she falls at his feet and says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother, he wouldn't have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who'd come along with her were also weeping, he was deeply moved and troubled in his spirit. And he asked, where have you laid him? And they replied, come and see, Lord. And at this point it says, Jesus wept. He entered into to the fullness of the feelings. He's fully God and he's fully man. He, he, he felt what we feel. Even though he knew what he's getting ready to do. 
He said, no, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling what you're feeling. I want you to know that. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind, couldn't he have kept him from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. There was a cave. A stone was laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, uh, by this time, there's a bad odor in there because he's been in there for four days now, dead. I mean, you, you, you kind of had your moment, Lord, but you missed it. The window kind of closed, and now the situation really stinks. But sometimes Jesus waits until things really stink. And then he says, now I'm going to do my thing. Don't lose faith. Now it's time for me to fix and heal and bring life. And that's what he does. Look at verse 40. Jesus said, Did I, did it, didn't I tell you? If you believe, you'll see the glory of God. And so they did what he said. They rolled away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always do hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people who are standing here, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. And his hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth was around his face. And Jesus said to them, now, you take off the grave clothes and you let them go. And then verse 45 says, therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, many of them believed in him that day. Now, let's bring it in for landing in, in a real clear application. Sometimes Jesus waits in our situation. But if we'll listen, we'll hear him say, hey, 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 I have not forgotten you. Sometimes I got to wait until it stinks that bad because it's only at that point that I can step in. And I'm not just going to get your brother healed. I'm not just going to get your brother raised up. I'm going to bring a whole lot of other people into the faith because of this. There's going to be a bigger thing going on than just, just you and your, and your brother. I'm going to bring a lot of other people into faith and trust in me because of what they're getting ready to see. And I think that's kind of important for us to realize at a time like this. Now, I want you to notice two things. Two quick things as we start to, to come in for a landing. And that is, did you notice right before he, he calls Lazarus out, first thing he does, he tells the people, roll away the stone. That's kind of interesting because don't you think Jesus could have rolled away the stone? I think he could have gone, and the stone could have rolled away. He's God, right? He could have done that, but he didn't do that. He said, I want you to roll away the stone. And then just after he brings Lazarus out and resurrects him, then after that, he says, now, you see him, he's all garbed up in the, the, the clothes that wrapped him up with to be buried. Go help him get untangled from those. You guys, you go in and, and you help uh, get him untangled. I find that kind of interesting. I think that's really important for us to get this evening. Because here's, here's what I think he was saying. I think he was saying, okay, look, uh, sometimes I'm going to let it get to a point that it really stinks. Don't think I've quit on you. Don't think I don't love you. Don't, none of that. Because I'm going to show up. And I'm going to bring what only I can bring. I'm going to bring the life. But we're going to do this thing together. I'm going to call you my church, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to call you to partner with me in this thing. I'm going to ask you to do some stone moving away. I'm going to ask you to untangle some of the garbs that he's in. I'll do the thing that only I can do. And I'm going to ask you to do the thing that you can do. And we're going to do this thing together. And I think that's the word that he has for the church this evening, friends. I think he's saying to us, I'm going to do miracle after miracle after miracle. And I'm going to use you 
in it. You're going to be a player in it. Just like the one that I heard about two days ago. I was here the day that we, we had the shelter going here. We were sheltering. And there was people all around here. And they had blankets on them and coffee. And, and, and I was just walking around checking on people and, and said, hi. Sorry you're here. I'm glad you're here. But, I'm, you know, and whatever you say. And, and I got talking with one guy. His name was Jeff. And I said, so how did, what's your story? He said, oh, pastor, let me tell you what happened. It was amazing. He said, um, we lived here 35 years, and we've never taken water into our house. And it came in, and it kept coming. And the first floor, and then it started coming up the stairs. And we're going up the stairs. My wife and I, we're in our 60s, and we're going up the stairs. And about this time, we're like, this is bad. What are we going to do? How are we going to get out? I'm looking out the window. We're praying, God, you're going to have to do something kind of big right here. And I look down the street, and now the street has turned into a river. And here's a guy coming on a boat towards our house. I could have sworn it was Jesus driving the boat, he said. And he pulls up to our window, and he says to my wife, here, let me help you in. He gets her in. He helps me in. We go pulling away. I ask him, Jeff told me, I ask him, who are you anyhow? He said, here's my name. Where are you from? I'm from Tyler. I was just watching the news, and I just felt like I, I got to get, get the boat, and I got to get down there and help. <laughs> and he said, it was, the, it was the most surreal thing, Pastor, just that God sent that man from Tyler to rescue us. There's so many of those kind of stories that have been happening. My phone's been lit up, as I bet that your has uh, as well. In fact, if we had time, we could probably go around and, and be very touched and, and moved for hours if we did the open mic. We don't have time to do that. But, but I, I will just tell you just, just one, one last one. And it has to do with the team that went out yesterday. This was a powerful thing. They went out to, to, to start doing the tear out on, on one of our people's homes, and they got it finished. And so they said, well, why don't we go over to this house? They knock on the door. This guy, they, he and his wife, they're not even Christians. They're not even, they don't even know about Jesus and all that kind of stuff. And they don't go to church. And, and they're like, okay, you want to, sure, come on in. So they start doing the tear out and they're serving. And that man asked the team, like, who are you all? And why are you even doing this for us? But thank you. And they said, well, we're Christians and we love Jesus. And we're from this church called Faith Bridge. And this is just kind of what we're, we're doing. But, you know, I was thinking about, isn't that, you know, that story touches our hearts, but it also rings a bell of familiarity in our souls, right? Because our God is a God who's always been on a mission to save us. That's why it feels like such a familiar song. I've heard this song before. Yeah, because 2,000 years ago, God, looking down upon human creation that he'd made, who all of us had gone astray like sheep, we'd all sinned and rebelled, and we'd shaken our fists at him and said, I'll just live my life you know, the way I want to live it anyhow. And instead of just wadding up planet Earth and just throwing us away like a paper wad that you throw in the wastebasket, he said, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to come and I'm going to live among you. I'm going to send my own son into your broken world. And he's going to live the life of sinless perfection that you can't live. And then he's going to die on the cross for your sake. He's going to take the punishment that you deserve to take. And then he's going to rise on the third day, signifying to any person, if you'll attach yourself to me, if you'll connect yourself to me and stay tethered to me by faith, I will carry you through every single storm, certainly <clears throat> the greatest of all storms, that final storm that we all have to face called death. He says, I'm going to take you through that to life. And so, friends, we're going to be the body of Christ. We're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to go to our brothers and our sisters and our strangers who are neighbors, Jesus says, and we're going to serve. And it's going to take weeks and months. And Pastor Dan was telling me yesterday, I bet it takes a year at least for all of the things that are going to have to be done. But that's why we're here. And so it occurred to me, we're going to have to have extra sustenance. And so we're going to come to the Lord's table uh, because he gave us this great symbol. He, he, he said, now, here's the deal. From time to time, you're going to like forget this message, but I don't want you to forgive it. forget it. 
I'm gonna leave you a very tangible, like you can even do it with, your, with the other senses. I'm gonna leave you something to just access everything that we've talked about, the mission that I came on. And he took the bread that night and he broke it and he said, now this, from now on, this represents my body, which is broken for you. And he says, and this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And I want you to drink it when you come together. And you're going to have some spiritual sustenance from coming and remembering what I've done, which then will propel you out to be who I've called you to be so that we can do the miracles I have in mind that we're going to do because my name is going to be made great in the city of Houston because of this. And so before we come and have the Lord's Supper, why don't we just pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that your timing is always perfect, even though it sometimes does not make sense and certainly doesn't sync up with our timing. And it's easy for us to get frustrated and confused and bitter and, and, and all in the midst of it. But all along you're saying, wait a second, I'm still in control. And I'm going to do even something bigger than what you might have wanted. And so I need you to step into seeing things through my lens, the lens of faith. So Jesus, would you help us to be your people, to turn our eyes to you? If you're here today and you haven't ever even said yes to Jesus in the first place, right now, why don't you just quietly, you just say, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to live inside of me. I need your supernatural power. I need your Holy Spirit working inside of me. And the rest of us, Lord, we just need a, um, a reminder. And that's why we came this evening. Now, would you meet with us as we come and have the bread and the cup? You speak to us and and touch us at our deepest places of anxiety and worry and fear and so. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So the ushers are going to lead you, and, and here's what we're going to do. We're just going to sing a few more songs, and they'll lead you, and you just come up to one of the stations at the front, one of the tables, and you can get one of the gluten-free crackers and dip it into the grape juice, and then you can partake. And um, and then if you'd like to, uh, to, to kneel on the steps and have a little time to pray, maybe you brought your whole family, you can do it all together. You can pray. Our uh, prayer partners, they have red shirts on. If you would like somebody to come pray for you or with you, why don't you just kind of hold your hands out or beckon for one of them. They'll be glad to come over in their red shirt and, and just pray for you, whatever you whisper to them that's on your heart and your mind. I'll ask you, why, why don't we not just go barging out the door, but let's kind of finish together. Let's finish strong. And you go on back to your seats because we're just going to sing a couple more songs and then we're going to be done. Then we'll all go out to serve the world um, together. All right. So ushers, you're ready. Let's come and let's do it now. <laughs>